stars are brightly shining, it is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the world felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh he. Well, uh, I'm going to be reading one verse out of Luke that I had, um, what's your name again? Brother Austin, uh, read a marathon of verses through. As we are going through uh, the Christmas story, this Christmas, go figure. Well, it's kind of a unique thing here at Desert Hills, as I've never really felt tied to the seasons. Uh, the seasons are mostly man-made. Uh, but we won't get into that today, but instead we choose to celebrate the birth of Christ at this time, and that's okay. It's, we can always celebrate the birth of Christ each and every day. I said it uh, earlier, and I think this year we may do it, and this next coming year, 2021, we may be having Christmas in July. What are they going to do? Put me on nights at Albertsons? You know? <laughs> for those of you who are new, that I worked there for 20 years. Oh, boy, it's nothing worse you could do. But no, look, we can celebrate Jesus' birth each and every day, even as every Sunday is Easter for the Christian. Amen? Amen. For he is risen. risen Who said that? Ooh, man, I'll tell you what, we're going to double your pay, Don. God bless you. (laughs) 
No, we're going to read one verse and then we're going to get into some uh, theology about this thing that was done, this thing, this thing that was done by the Holy Ghost who came upon this Virgin Mary and who is called the Son of God. Ooh, it's an amazing thing. Here in Luke chapter 1, in verse 35, And then the angel, this angel Gabriel, answered and said unto her, Mary, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. The word picture is, the Holy Ghost shall brood over her as he did. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit brooded over the deep in Genesis as the earth was void and without form. And God spoke it into existence. It says that the, uh, that the power of the highest shall shadow over thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The Son of God. It seems rather irreverent at least in my mind, that they should, uh, the Holy Spirit would use this terminology, that holy thing shall be called the Son of God. But we're talking about an action, as it were. That holy thing, that holy action which shall be done, shall be called the Son of God. What action is that? Manifesting something from nothing. Now think for a moment. We have those who... <laughs> Well, they, they have, what if, what's it been going on, a thousand years now? A thousand years, this stupid little comedy called The Big Bang Theory. And they got that little, that little ditty right before the, the whole comedy starts. And it all started with The Big Bang. Yeah, that's cute. <laughs> but see, they can't, describe, they, they can't explain exactly how The Big Bang started or anything other than that. Did you know that came from a Jesuit priest, by the way? <laughs> Funny. No, my friends, we live in a world that had a beginning, and it will have an end. And do you know what? We live in a cosmos. We live in a reality. We live in an existence that at one time did not exist. There has been only one that has existed. He is called the Ancient of Days. He has ever existed. He is the only uncreated one, and he is God. And he created everything from nothing. You know, the most amazing artist, the most amazing musician, the most amazing sculptor must at least have the elements of something else in order to produce something. I was on um, the Instagram yesterday, and uh, Brother Ray over there, he's an artist. I did not realize that you made those things. I did not realize you painted those things. That's amazing. But Ray, he, he, I don't know if he sculpts them, but I know he definitely paints them. He paints these things, but I, I recognize the talent. I recognize the ability, but I also understand he started with the base elements of something. Yes, there was a, a thought in his mind. There was an image that he projected upon this thing and he made it come to life as it were. But he took something and made it another thing. Only God produces something from nothing. Ah, now let me tell you why this is important at Christmas time, especially to those who are listening on the internet, watching maybe listening on the radio, and you here today who may not know Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us that we are nothing without Christ. Ah, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Are you ready for this? Say amen. amen. See, he takes our nothingness and creates something. He takes a garment of heaviness and gives us a garment of praise. He gives, us, he gives us beauty for our ashes. This is the God of the Bible. This is that thing that was done in Mary. 
that was called the Son of God. Turn with me, if you will, to Hebrews chapter 1. I keep going back to this, this Christmas season. Many of you may think, oh, he just planned this. No. I, I, I'm flattered. Flattered. I just trust that it's the Lord's guidance. We, we spoke a little bit about this the other day. As we know that in these times, how has God spoken to us? By his Son. We need not fables or cleverly devised myths or extra biblical books. He has spoken to us by his Son, a canonized scripture that we have. And in such, I have never met anyone who has mastered Genesis through Revelation. I will tell you this, I am trying desperately to allow it to master me. Here we read, and I'm going to preach through it. Now, I'm not going to have you turn to scriptures. And indeed, Brother Bill, God bless you. He, we talked the other day. I, I've been giving so much scripture. He says, do I have to put it all up on the video? No, he does not. But thank God for a rewind. You can go to the video and re-listen to it, and you should be able to get the scriptures if I pronounce them correctly. So if you don't want to take notes, that's cool. But listen quickly, amen? amen. Hebrews chapter 1. This is the theology of this thing that was done in Mary. The one who was called the Son of God. God who at sundry times, in diverse manners, spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. He hath made hath in these days, and these last days, spoken unto us by his Son. In these last days, we are in the last days. They say, oh, he's one of those doomsayers. Now look, hold on a second. Let's park there for two seconds. Now we are either in the beginning of the end, or we're in the end of the beginning. I can't tell you what it is. I know Paul thought Christ, Christ's return was imminent, and the day was any day. The, the pastor that was preaching when I was eight years old thought we were in the end days. The pastor who ordained me as a deacon, uh, the man who ordained me as, uh, into the pastoral ministry, they all th thought we're in the last days. I can't tell you. I think we're in the last days, though. <laughs> uh, but I can't be. No one knows the time or the day. The key is, is to be ready. You know, the best managers I ever had at that grocery store that I detested working at, the best managers I ever had, they all managed uh, r randomly. You never knew when they would come and check your work. Why? Because they wanted you to be ready at all times. After 15 years, they would say, hey, make sure to do a good job. The big wigs are coming in town. You know what I finally realized? I do a good job every day. I'm not going to get all worked up and fired up. I do a good job every day. They should come tomorrow or the next day or next week because you know why? I do a good job every day. You know how I knew? Because they kept paying me. If I didn't do a good job, they would have fired me. Well, maybe not. I was union after all. But that's a whole other story. Oh, boy, I just alienated half of Las Vegas. No. Listen, the key is, is to be ready. To be ready, my Lord is coming. He says, in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he also made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, the express image of his person, Jesus Christ is God in the flesh, don't let anybody fool you, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he made by himself purged our sin, when he had by him, excuse me, when he had by himself purged our sin, sat down at the right hand of the throne of majesty on high. Last week I gave you three P words. Paid, purged, and propitiation. He's paid the price. He's purged us of our sins. By what? Becoming the propitiation of our sins. He is the substitute for our sins, as he is the vicar, or died the 
vicarious death on our behalf. He goes on to say that uh, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath been an inheritance obtained, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now, see, here's where the King James gets a little sketchy sometimes, and maybe some other uh, 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 translations. It says, being made so much better than the angels. Being made, Jesus Christ wasn't made. Jesus Christ and the triunity of the Godhead wa was not made. Even as God is unmade and eternal, so Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in their triune relationship are eternal as well. Ah, but this doesn't speak as to existence. This speaks as to uh, status, if you will. For instance, at one time I was a grocery clerk, but then I was made a pastor. But I've always been a man. Oh, excuse me. I've, I've always been a male. <laughs> I was a boy once uh, until a couple weeks ago when Kim made me grow up. <laughs> she said, you cannot have... Ice cream, morning, noon, and night. That's just childish, Scott. No. Uh, my, see, I, I, I was a grocery clerk, but then, then I was ordained and, and I was made a pastor. Well, see, God the Son, God the Son, left His glory with the Father and was made in the fashion of a man. In the fashion of a man, in the womb of a virgin that he might dwell among us, made in the likeness of men. Ah, see, we, as men and women, are made in the likeness of God. Not God, but in the likeness of God. And that likeness is a far cry from being God, just as Jesus Christ, being made in the likeness of men, is a far cry from being a man. He is the God-man, perfect in every way, without sin or blemish. How else could he have become the sinless sacrifice? Yes, I tell you, there's more Christmas theology in Hebrews chapter 1 uh, than, than in most other of the books of your Bible. Well, we'll go on, and it says, Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath uh, by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than then. Inheritance? Inheritance by what? Be being the only begotten. And earning it by his sacrifice. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, capital S-O-N. This day I have begotten thee. And again, this day, oh, excuse me, are you ready for some scripture? Let's go back, because i got to give you these scripture. Being made much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. Check it out when you get home. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. They're going to become a fast and furious from here on out. Be ready. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Psalms chapter 2, verse 7. Acts chapter 13, verse 33. And 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. He goes on to say, and again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let the angels of God worship him. Psalm 97, 7. Psalm 97. Why am I giving you these things? Because I want you to know that your New Testament is congruent with the Old Testament and it, what the Old Testament has already established. I said on Wednesday, I say again, the Old Testament is Jesus Christ concealed. The New Testament is Jesus Christ revealed. See, I believe that the penman, the amanuensis, if you will, of Hebrews is Paul. If it's not, it doesn't matter. It's someone whose mind was as great, if not greater, than Paul's. But the Holy Spirit wrote these things down, right, with a touchstone of the Old Testament, bringing the Hebrews to who it was written to, into contact with Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus Christ was so much better and greater than the angels who are not to be worshipped. So much better and greater than Moses and the law by which Jesus Christ came and fulfilled 
not abolished, but fulfilled. So much greater than the Aaronic and Levitical priesthood by which Jesus Christ now has a priesthood that is greater in the order of Melchizedek, not having a beginning or an end as Melchizedek. No, no one knows who he was. No one knows who his mom or dad were. And Jesus Christ, though we have the record of his adopted father Joseph and that vessel of clay, Mary, whom he was birthed by, his father and only real parent is God Almighty. Jesus Christ is greater than all of those. Why? Because he is God in the flesh. And Hebrews is pointing to that. That this Christ child supersedes everything that came before in the Old Testament, but the Old Testament was always pointing to him. Always pointing to him that in Bethlehem a virgin would give birth. She would give birth to this child. His name would be called Emmanuel, Counselor, Wonderful. The government would one day rest upon his shoulders. He would save the nation from their sins. Even today is saving boys and girls, men and women from their sins. Giving peace to the believer. Goodwill unto men. And goodwill unto you today, should you receive it. God is good, my friends, all the time. Count on it. Bake on it. Walk home with it. Ride home with it. Sleep good tonight. Don't worry about who the president will be. Know who the propitiation for your sins is. And... Know that you have peace with God. Amen or oh me. Amen. All right, that was for free. We'll keep moving. I get fired up, you know. Talking about Jesus does that to me. He goes on, he says, um, and again, when he bringeth, verse 6, bringeth, first, uh, uh, bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith unto all the angels of God, worship him. Psalm 97, 7. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angel spirits uh, and his ministering a, fire, a flame of fire? But unto the Son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Psalm 45, verses 6 and 7, a ruler staff. Verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And, and this is what I was talking about before. It's one of my favorite verses. Uh, Isaiah uh, chapter 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. I, I wanted to name a band this, Beauty for Ashes, but it was already taken. He has anointed us with this oil of gladness. This is what Pastor Roger is always trying to convey to folks when he preaches. Invariably, at any given time during one of Pastor Roger's sermons, he'll say, why, why do we always walk around with such an upside-down smile as Christians? He has anointed us with the oil of gladness. Uh, again, he, he, we have traded our ashes for his beauty. A, a, a robe, a robe of praise, a garment of praise for what? Our... our, our are rags of despair. Oh, I tell you, this is the true meaning of Christmas, if you will, other than God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. After you've grabbed that, John 3, 16, then you start to get into the depth and the meaning of who his son is. And after you have received his son, knowing and understanding that he's giving you this robe to wear, that you have now have a ring and a signet. You have been sealed by his Holy Spirit. That you are a child of the king, an heir apparent to the throne. That your spirit now resides with him in the heavenlies. You are royalty, kings and priests unto the God most high. If he be for you, who can be against you? Oh, Christmas time, Christmas time. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest. They shall wax, 
They shall wax old as the garment, Isaiah 51, 6. And as a vesture shall thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same. Thy years shall not fail. First, let us talk about the vesture. Thou shall fold them up. Now, maybe that Jesuit priest, when speculating about the Big Bang, was trying to describe what he believed God creating something from nothing might have been. God spoke everything into existence. That's what the Bible says. But here, at least, many scientists do agree with the Bible. They say that at some point, existence will begin to collapse upon itself. That's what the writer of Hebrews is explaining. At some point, at the end of time, God is going to start folding everything like a vesture in on itself. And he's going to put it away. And we're going to read about it in a second. But that's what he's describing here. You say, oh, man, are you talking about the end times at Christmas time? At Christmas time, God was preparing the world for the end times. See, why? Because when men, man, mankind fell in the garden, it set all of creation on the path to destruction. See, and, and he is about making all things new, and all things will be made new someday. And that, again, is why we, sh we spread the good news of Jesus Christ. That you could be made new today. You could be made new today. But one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. But today is the day of salvation. And it can be your day. How will you choose? But he says, again, that uh, they shall perish, but thou, thou remainest. And... and uh, they all shall wax as an old garment, uh, and as a vesture thou shalt fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Now this is a reference even in this own book to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8, that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Isn't it wonderful that God cannot change? Now I said something once about the devil, that he cannot change. God, well, the devil's tactics don't change. He's the same, too. He, see, he, he doesn't change. He, he's the same rascal as he always has been. He's a liar, a thief, and a murderer from the beginning. So, you know, he doesn't stop at Christmas time. He will lie to you. He will try to destroy your, your hope. He will try to steal your joy every chance he gets. He does it mostly through the news, just saying. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, but I love, I love Channel 8. Easy now easy you know I like George Knapp you know he went against the mob but that's a whole other story we'll move on before I get in too much trouble but to which verse 13 to which of the angels said he at any time sit at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool Psalm 110 and verse 1 Psalm 110 and verse 1. And here's the key verse, and Lord willing, the closing verses I'd like to get to today in the story of our Christmas messages. Verse 14 of Hebrews chapter 1. Are they not all ministering spirits? These are the angels he's talking about. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister? For them who shall be heirs of salvation. Now he's talking about the angels that worship Jesus. And he's saying a, a rhetorical question that all these who worship Jesus are sent forth to be ministers to who? Those who shall be heirs. Who's that talking about? Us, Julie. Christians. And people you know, always say, well, you know, I just feel alone. You are never alone. First of all, God is everywhere at all times. But did you know 
that we have, I've said it many times, we at the very least have a two-to-one advantage when it comes to the angels and the ministering spirits. Why? Well, the Bible says in Revelation that the devil, that dragon, old Slewfoot himself, with his tail took a third of the stars with him when he rebelled. Well, if he only took a third, Austin, I'm not too sharp, but that leaves two-thirds that are still on God's side. And what does it say right there in Hebrews? That what? They, are they not ministering spirits unto the heirs of salvation? Ah. Turn with me to Daniel. Turn with me to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 10. Because I want you to read, and I want to read to you the prophetic words of Daniel, and then we're going to go to Revelation chapter 20. For everybody who's been quaking in their boots about the end times and the, the way of our country and, and everything else, I want you to remember that in Christ you have promises beyond compare. Amen. Regardless of whether these here United States stand or fall, the kingdom of God will last forever. Here in, in Daniel chapter 7, we're going to start in verse 9. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. Hear the word of God. Let it speak. Know these prophetic words. Daniel writes, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days. Who is that? Jesus. Till the ancient of days did sit down whose garment was white as snow and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels were burning fire. The fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto who? Him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, and the judgment was set. And the books were opened. The angels worship him. 10,000 times 10,000. And what was happening? The books were opened. What books? The books of life and judgment. These are the ministering spirits that are given to the heirs of salvation. Let me speak to the lost one moment. This is what you don't have. You have no inheritance. You, you have no ministering spirit to you like this. You don't have 10,000 times 10,000 that stand with you. You say, well, you don't have that either. You can't see them. I see them with the eyes of faith. Just as the prophet said, God, open their eyes. Let them see. Let them see that those that uh, uh, are for us are more than those that are encompassed about us. I know. I don't just think. I don't just believe. I know Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know Jesus Christ has overcome the world. I know this. I know what I confessed last Wednesday is true. Though he may kill me, my Redeemer lives. And because he lives, I will live again. I will never die. I know this. We want you to know this. So that you can live in peace. Because there's coming a day. There's coming a day. Turn with me to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 and verse, because this is a direct reference to this chapter. And it, 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 listen to me. Christmas time, there's no more appropriate time to talk about this. This is why Jesus Christ split time in half. That he might save the world from damnation. That he might come. You see, when, when we sing about goodwill towards men, we're talking about God's goodwill towards men. I, I read a meme yesterday. I didn't even know what a meme was, Ray. 
I didn't even know what a meme was until you turned me on to, to Instagram. I, I thought a meme was something you were to somebody, like you're mean to me. Don't be so mean, you know. I didn't know what a meme was. I read a meme yesterday, and this was profound. I showed Kim. She goes, I've seen that on Facebook a thousand times. I said, well, it's new to me. I read a meme yesterday that said the story of Jesus Christ is the only story where the hero dies for all the villains. That's powerful. Daniel, Daniel chapter 7 is speaking about Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. And Christmas 2020, it's totally appropriate to point this out. John, the revelator, says, And I saw a great white throne, and him, Jesus, that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heavens uh, fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great. What does that mean? The dead, small and great. Are we talking about the tall and the short? No. We're talking about those who were politically mighty. Those who were rich and famous. Those who, those little old ladies who, you know what, they never really did anything wrong uh, according to anybody else, but they denied Jesus Christ in their anonymity. He says, I saw those small and great. Stand before God. And the books were opened. The books were opened. Which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things. Were written in the book according to their works. And the sea gave up their dead. You ever think about that? You ever think of how many people have died and gone to the bottom of the ocean? Think about this. This will blow your mind especially if you believe the Bible. The waters didn't just come down from the heavens in the deluge. They also came up from the ground. Think about all of the life, the human life, that was destroyed during the flood and the first extinguishing of sin on this planet. It says that the dead, the sea gave up its dead which were in it, and the death and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man, according to their works. And death, the grave, and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And I can go on and on. Isaiah chapter 65, 2 Peter chapter 3. We go on and 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 on. Christmas time is here again. And today is the day of salvation. Just like it was Wednesday night. Just like it was Sunday morning. Just like it will be tomorrow morning. Just like it will be Tuesday just like it will be whenever you hear this on the radio or watch it on our website. Right now, Ray, I've got no less than 50 pushes on the Instagram reaching out all over the country. There's about 30,000, um, what do they call them? Imprints, I guess? Uh, impressions. There's about 30,000 impressions that they've made. I would say there's a little over two, maybe 300 extra visits to our websites that, that have been made. How is God going to use that? I don't know. I just pray a portion of them. Receive Jesus Christ. I thank God for you, Ray. Listen, folks, don't ever think the mission changes. No matter who's in the White House, doesn't matter who's in control of the Senate, it doesn't matter who's in the Supreme Court. The mission doesn't change. You know why? Because God changeth not. The mission doesn't change. He loves us. He loves this world. 
Oh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> There's a scripture that God that says God is angry at the sinner every day. Yeah, why? Because they won't repent. But today you can. Today you can. Today you can say, I've been wrong. I need to be right. I need to come into agreement with God that my way is the wrong way. God's way is the right way. I need forgiveness. I need Jesus. I need to be forgiven. And the only way to be forgiven is to receive Jesus as the all-sufficient sacrifice for my sin and ask Him, please forgive me. Please forgive me. And then receive eternal life. Forgiveness for your sins. And then guess what happens? Ah, anointed with that oil of gladness. Ooh, a robe of praise. Beauty for ashes. It's, it's yours. And by the way, I'm not a used car salesman. I'm not selling you anything. It's all free. Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. And it's yours. If you want it. It's your gift that he gave.